What is up, everyone? Welcome back to Let's Play Silent Hill 3. In the last episode, we used the power of chemistry to mix bleach and detergent together to create an insecticide to kill the bugs off that were blocking our access to this hallway. Now we can venture deeper into the mall and wrap things up in this area. So this is a storage room. I'm gonna find a bunch of handgun bullets in here, and I think somewhere around this room there's another piece of... There it is. Another piece of beef jerky. Not essential to come into this room, especially since we're already pretty well stocked on bullets. So, we'll exit the storage room. Is it on the left or the right up here? There it is. There's a closer in this room, all you have to do... Let's run past him, go through these double doors. This will lead you out into a familiar hallway. Wait a minute, no, I'm thinking of the one ahead of this. Ooh, don't want to fall in. So we're gonna head over following this left or west facing pathway. There's the double head. When you see the dog, that's your visual cue to, ooh, almost got me. To head into this shop and it's Kind of hard to see, but there is a vice in this room. Looks like it could have been drawn in blood. No wonder my head hurts, and I feel so awful when I look at it. Some more comments about the mysterious symbol that Heather seems to recognize, but can't quite put her finger on. That symbol, by the way, is called the Halo of the Sun, and its purpose will be revealed later on in the game. Now, it, it's hard to see the vice there the first time through, because it looks like just a bloody gurney with all sorts of stuff strapped to it. I'm gonna put the walnut in that we got from the jewelry store, and there's a jewel inside when you crack the walnut open. It's a moonstone, so now Heather can evolve her trusty Clefairy. Now we'll exit again. Oh, dog's right there waiting for me. Run past the dog, head right out of there. There's an unlocked door, and now we are in a familiar area. We haven't... I don't think we've seen this area in the Nightmare World, but we... Oh no, we did. I think this is where the numbodies were at one point. We're back in the cafe. Oh, sucker punch a numbody. Beat him with the pipe. Let's see, should be... I think they take four hits on normal to go down. I believe this is the cafe we passed through earlier to get the pipe. Oh yeah, there's another one right there. Not gonna get sucker punched by another numbody. And four, down. Silent Hill 3 introduced a new mechanic to the combat, which... I think just barely got shown a little bit in that room. Weapons in Silent Hill 3, melee weapons, that is, glance off of the wall now. So if you're using a long weapon like the pipe, in a very cramped, tight hallway. Just like in Dark Souls, the weapons can glance off the wall and bounce off. I see health back here. Oh, that was a poor choice. I got too greedy going after that stuff. I think I took two hits. So it means that you have to now be a little bit more cautious and a little bit more careful about your weapon selection in a given area. You might want to keep going with a particular weapon, but if the hallway or the room you're fighting in is too cramped, then it might not be such a good idea to stick with melee weapons. Otherwise, you'll swing at an enemy, your weapon will bounce off the wall, and you'll take a hit, most likely. But now that we've used the moonstone on the door on the third floor that we couldn't get through earlier, we are going to go ahead and make our way over to this ladder over here with a handgun equipped because we're coming up on our first proper boss fight.
After climbing down to the bottommost floor, we meet the split worm, whose name was getting me confused earlier when I was calling the uh, the double heads the dogs, split heads and whatnot. Split head, I think, was the first boss of Silent Hill One. It was the lizard boss. Double heads are the dogs. Split worm is the boss we're facing now, and he plays a little bit like a game of whack-a-mole. One really useful trick for this fight is to use the left trigger, which is the button that unlocks your camera and lets you swivel it around. If you just hold that down while the split worm is burrowed in the wall, the camera will lock onto the hole that he's going to pop out of, which makes it very easy to avoid ever being in front of him. And that, in turn, makes it super easy to avoid any damage because all of his attacks require you to be in front of him in order for him to do any damage to you except for that attack that doesn't actually do damage can hit you though it's just there to stun you in case you're in front of him it leaves you wide open for him to hit you but you shouldn't really ever take a hit in this in this encounter because it's quite easy to avoid him popping out in front of you so just rinse and repeat this pattern unload about 50 to 15 to 20 rounds into him and just angle yourself so you can shoot him in the face when he unburrows and exposes his fleshy mouth. What? It's the shopping mall just like before. And after that very taxing fight against the split worm, Heather finds herself back in the normal version of the mall. One more thing about the split worm. On hard, he has an extra attack, which is a one-hit kill that he telegraphs by roaring at you. But again, you should never get hit because all of his attacks require you to be directly in front of him. And now we're back in Happy Burger, where we... Oh, shit, I missed the message. This is the restaurant we were in at the beginning of the game. This is where Heather was sleeping, in fact. There was an extra little comment that I missed. Kind of sad about that. Here, we get more handgun bullets than we actually expended fighting the boss. All of the bosses from here on out, though, are going to be way more challenging than the split worm. Split worm was just kind of a... Introductory boss. Now we have nothing left to do but leave them all. First, let's reload and equip the pipe. Heather! It's you. What just happened? You must be one of them! What did I do? What do you mean by one of them? You're in on this with that Claudia, aren't you? Claudia? What about her? She asked me to find you, that's all. So you are one of them. Claudia did all that? Look, I was just hired to find you. I'm not on anybody's side. I don't know anything about this. Why don't you start by telling me what happened here? And that monster. What the hell was that? I don't know any more than you do. All I know is that things are getting really screwy around here, and 
I got a weird feeling it's got something to do with me. Maybe you're just an innocent bystander, but I, I can't feel sorry for you because you dragged me into this. You know, if you hadn't found me... What are you talking about? What's so special about you anyway? If I knew that, I wouldn't be so confused, would I? But I know there's something. Something I've been running from and forgot for a long time. How did I remember that? What's wrong? Nothing. Where are you going? I'm taking the subway home. What should I do? How if I know? Heather has balls of steel to be running around this creepy desolate subway station underground after the shit she just went through. I've played this game over and over so many times and this subway section still creeps me out. There isn't a whole lot going on down here but just the atmosphere of this level still manages to give me the creeps. Just a dark, dimly lit Creepy, abandoned, totally isolated subway station. This is not our subway map, our proper subway map anyway. This is just a list of the routes. Heather knows her way home without looking at it. Bergen Street train at platform 3. So that looks to be where we're headed towards. Not without a few detours first, though. Over here on the ticket machines... We have a newspaper, which is quite important for something I want to show off in a little bit. Fatal accident at Hazel Street. At about 11 p.m. on the 4th, a man waiting on the platform at the Hazel Street station fell onto the tracks and was decapitated by the arriving St. Renata college-bound train. The victim died instantly. While police have not yet determined whether the death was an accident or suicide, Witnesses report that the victim did not look inebriated and seemed to jump off the platform deliberately. The victim's identity is still unknown. He was approximately 40 years old and 5 feet 10 inches tall and was wearing a black jacket. The newspaper is 4 months old. What's doing here now? It's a good question, Heather. Why don't we go and find out the answers to those questions? Or that question, rather. Not plural. So we'll go through the turnstile into the east section of the subway station and pick up our map. And the map confirms what I was just saying. It's not a huge area. There isn't a whole lot going on down here. We are going to eventually be introduced to a new type of enemy, but that will come later. For now, we're going to check out a cool little Easter egg. And part of that Easter egg, one required step in finding it, is to read that newspaper up here. We're going to come down the other set of steps here, and there's going to be a magazine on the ground right here. And we also have to read this magazine entry, or article, in order to have a cutscene later play out. It's an occult magazine. It seemed like a bunch of crap to me. Heather's attitude showing through again. I love her characterization. It's not so bad if you just read it for fun. The souls of those who died suddenly by suicide or accident don't realize they're dead. Sometimes they stay put and haunt that particular place. These spirits have lost their human senses and memories, and can only keep replaying the pain and sadness of the moment they died. The pain can get so bad that they turn to humans for salvation, or they begrudge humans their lives. At such times, they can possess humans. Places known as famous suicide spots or high-accident areas are often to blame. 
You should be careful when approaching such locations, especially on the day or at the time the death occurred. That is, if you don't want it to happen to you, too. So we have a magazine about the occult and spirits possessing humans, subsequent to a newspaper article about a suicide on the tracks. With those two articles read, we can come down here to the platform and check something cool out. Quickly turn and get off the tracks. If you don't get off the tracks quickly, the subway will come and run you over and kill you. And that will be game over. If you go back down onto the tracks after you avoid the subway train and you go far enough down the tracks, you will also be run over in a cutscene. And your reward for getting off the tracks in time and surviving that is a health drink on the bench. Always like that little Easter egg. And you only get to see that cutscene that will only occur to you if you've read both of those articles. The one about the suicide and the one about spirits possessing or just generally messing with you. But that's going to do it for now. We will finish up the subway and the next area in the next episode. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.